death is inevitable and also any attempt we don't like to hear about death we don't like to talk about death because it hurts and the attempt it brings back memories and it also brings some form of fear in our hearts but it is a reality whether we like to hear it or not death is a reality and we've been informed kafa bil mauti wa'ida kafa bil mauti wa'ida for one death to occur in a community in a family should be sufficient as an admonition and should be sufficient as a reminder for every person in that community a reminder of the reality that we are all to leave one day if we were to visit a doctor and the doctor was aware of some illness that is coming our way but despite this he felt that no if i inform this person this person would not like it if i if i inform him or her that such and such an illness is about to come your way then this person will get angry will get offended or will get hurt so guess what i'll just keep it to myself then this is known as clinical neglect medical neglect and many a times people actually sue doctors and hospitals for holding information for not informing them why because by informing them even if they even if it was something that they couldn't really do anything about it but it is their right that they should know in the same way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us and instructs us wadhkir that remind one another whether you like it or not wadhkir remind one another why fa inna dhikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin because this reminder it has some benefit and it will definitely hold benefit for the believers so my dear friends we lost many beloved individuals in the last in this week and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah showers them with his mercy Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their journey of the afterlife easy for them Amen. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses their families with sabr with patience Amen. Allah makes it easy for them to cope Amen. and we also pray to Allah that Allah allows us to realize and realize the reality <coughs> we are one day to leave this world when we study the quran and when we study the hadith and the teachings of our beloved nabi muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam our beloved prophet we find that they gave reminders after reminders on death and the remind and reminders after reminders on the reality of this life when we study the quran we will find allah how allah describes life on earth But unfortunately today life on earth the glitters and the glamours of this world the wealth and, and temptations have taken over our life and this is the result and this has resulted in us forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disconnecting ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator the one who blessed us with life we have cut off from him the one who has blessed us showered us with his favors we have cut off from him it is only when some illness hits us when something happens to us only then we kind of remember and we we realize how much he has favored us is recently a friend of ours he was informed that his kidneys have failed so they put him on dialysis now 
he, he has now come to terms that he's realized how much Allah had blessed us and him. That now he has to go and visit the hospital twice a week and spend four or five hours. And, and this is something that a small organ in the body was doing, which was blessed to it, which was gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is just the kidney. Imagine all the other organs. And imagine all the other blessings, the blessing of good health, the blessing of family, the blessing of wealth, the blessing of knowledge. All of this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear friends, this, this dunya, this life, and, and our time on this earth has really, Allah says, That this life, life on this earth, is nothing but a deception. Mata'ul ghurur, these things that we see around us, they have turned us away and they have become a major distraction from our reality. So we need to wake up. We need to wake up before it's too late. Because when our eyes close, that's when the reality will open. So the reality will open up, but at that time, my dear friends, it will be too late. It will be too late. The reality is a day will come when I will have to breathe my last. A day will come when we will all have to breathe our last. A day will come. You know how we receive messages on our phones? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Such and such an individual, Mawlana Muhim, the Imam of Nusratul Islam Masjid, has left this world, has passed away. It will happen. Haris Khan, Imamullah Khan, Abzal, Ajmal has left this world. Muhammad Saab has left this world. And, and then we will have people crying for us. We will have our loved ones crying for us, praying for us. But that day will come. And we need to remind ourselves, the beloved Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He says, remember death frequently Not so that you become scared Not so that it gives you anxieties Not so that it fears, puts fear in your heart, no, no He said, remember death frequently, visit the graveyard Because this will remind us of our reality It will assist us in crushing our temptations because it is the temptation of this world that has taken us away from our reality. So my dear friends, ek din zarur aayega jisme hum bhi akhiri saans lenge. We pray to Allah that when that day comes, our final day comes, Allah makes it the best day of our life. May Allah make the final day the best day of our life. May Allah make our final hours the best hours of our life. And may Allah send angels of mercy when we are leaving this world. My dear friends, a day will come when we will be taken in that ambulance on a stretcher, lifeless. We will be placed on that wash bed. We should visit it sometimes. We should go and see it. It's there in the back, in the back room. Hamjai, we need to go open that door and we need to tell ourselves that one day I will lie on that wash bed lifeless. He will move my hand and I will have no life in me to move my hand. I will know I will know I will not have any life in me to inform him that the water is too cold. Put some warm water. I will have no life in me to tell me that please can you I think my back is slightly you need to you've missed a spot no life I did mark for my forgive me for mentioning this but this is a reality which we need to hear we need to listen to this and I am saying this I am saying this for myself and I hope it benefits me because the Nabi of Allah like I said has informed us that remember death it is the thing that will crush your temptations because the, the crime that we see around us, the violence that we see around us, the basis to all of this is temptation. I want wealth, I don't care what happens to someone, I will get it even if an individual has to be harmed for that. 
I need fame. I will do whatever I want, whatever I can. Even if that means people's lives have to be destroyed. So this is all due to temptation. The Nabi of Allah says, if you want to crush your temptations, remind yourself of your death. So a day will come when people will congregate. Like today we have congregated, we have gathered, inshallah, after Salatul Jumu'ah. We will be performing the Salatul Janazah, the funeral prayer of our brother Sultan Ahmad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with Jannatul Firdaus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his rank. Amen. So inshallah, after Jumu'ah Salah, we will gather and we will perform the Janazah. But a day will come when our Janazah will also be brought to the Masjid. When we will be lying in our coffins. And our families will be here, our friends, the community will be there praying for us. And then that very same day we will be buried six foot in the ground. That's our real home. That's our real home. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said when an individual passes away, three things follow him. Three things follow him. His family, his wealth, and his actions. His family, his wealth, and his actions. Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ni firmaya ke jab kisi ka intikal hota hai to teen cheeze uske piche jate hai. Ek to khandan wale, dost ahbab, friends, family and friends. Ek yo uske maal کہ خاندان مال ہے تو مال بھی اور ایک ہے اس کے عامال his actions but after the janaza after the burial only one thing remains to go back family wealth will return but his actions will remain and it is the actions that will assist us in our grief it is the actions that we do and that we carry out that will beautify and lighten up our grave. So we need to ask ourselves, what kind of actions am I involved in? And we need to rectify our actions. We need to connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear friends, we just Allah ne hume zindagi di hai. That Allah who gave us life, we have time for everything other than that Allah, that creator, that Lord. Allah, how unfair is that? You know, you, if you have a child and the child is nice to everyone, he's built an orphanage, he's built an orphanage, he's looking after the poor, he's assisting people, he's nice and gentle, kind to everyone other than his parents who brought him up, through whom he came to this world. He's nice to everyone. What would you say about that person? But yes, we do acknowledge that he's nice, he's doing everything good. But there's a major thing in his life that is missing. The, the, the very individuals who have bought him and who have nurtured him, because of whom he grew up. And today he is who he is because of his parents. He's left them. Why, what will we say about that individual? In the same way, the very same Allah who gave us life, my dear friends. <coughs> who gave us sustenance, who gave us wealth, who gave us intelligence, who gave us everything. When we lose something, then we know that, oh no, Allah gave me that. What has happened, our connection with Allah is very poor. We have time for our friends, we don't have time for Allah. We make time for everyone. How much time do we make for Allah? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. We need to just ask ourselves, how much time do I have for Allah? Because my dear friends, it is the actions that will help us on the day of Jesus. Not wealth, not our status. I could be a doctor here, I could be a lawyer, I could be an MP, a mayor, the prime minister, but none of these statuses will help on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, when I stand before my creator, the only thing, 
that will assist me and help me is number one, what connection did I have with the one who I'm standing in front of today? <coughs> what was my relationship with him? <coughs> did I forget him and, and, and was I so engrossed in, in, in earning a wealth, earning my wealth for 60 years, 70 years that I was going to live on this earth? But I forgot the one who created me. <laughs> so that is what's going to help. How was I with my family? <clears throat> how was I with my community? How was, I, how was my relationship with those who work for me? With those who work with me? How was, did I look after the poor? Did I look after the orphans? Did I look after the widows? Or was I living a selfish life? I was more concerned about myself. My neighbors are going through problems. <laughs> My family members are going through problems. I don't care. I need to look after myself. So what kind of life? All of this, my dear friends, will assist us on the day of judgment. So Allah allows us to reflect. Allah allows us to really reflect on our lives. And where am I? What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I living a selfish life? Just looking after myself, me, myself, and I? Or is it me, my Allah? and my family, and my community. What is it? So my dear friends, Allah allows us to wake up. And then Allah allows us to fill our lives with good deeds. You know, yesterday, subhanAllah, one of my cousins passed away from Newcastle. The, the thing that really hits me is I was going, I was on my way for one funeral, and whilst I was preparing for another funeral. I was on my way to one funeral and whilst I was preparing for this funeral today and then when, when I got back and I went to get the coffin then there was another funeral taking place there funeral after funeral after funeral reality yeah. so my, my relative my cousin passed away Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus the reason I'm sharing this with you is, is, is something that we hear there's a saying, Inna kum la tamutuna kama tuhyun, wa tuba'afuna kama tamutun. This is an important saying. If there's nothing that you take back from this, listen to this very attentively. Inna kum la tamutuna kama tuhyun. We've been informed that you will die as you lived. You will leave this world as you lived on this world. Wa inna kum la tuba'afuna kama tamutun. And you will be raised in the state that you passed away. So if you live a good life, a righteous life, a life full of goodness, you are, you are one who spreads goodness, then inshallah, Allah will give you a death during that goodness, whilst doing good. And then when you are raised, because we are all to stand from our grave, by the way, we are all to stand from our grave. The Allah who gave us existence. Were we, exi were we all around 100 years ago? Were we all around 200 years ago? Were, were we around 1000 years ago? So that Allah who gave us existence. We weren't around, were we? After 1000 years, after 2000 years, or whenever the day of judgment takes place. Will Allah, that Allah who gave us existence, does he not have the power to bring us back alive again? Surely he does. So we will be brought back. We will be standing before our Lord. When we stand before our Lord, we will be standing in a manner in which our life was end, came to an end. So if an individual was doing good, and his final days, months of his life was a, a good one, then inshallah when he stands from his grave, he will be happy with himself. He will be pleased with himself. That I, I left this world in a good state, so he will have hope from Allah. In Allah. So my, my relative, my, my cousin, sorry, who, who left this world, he had a habit, and I'm sharing this so that inshallah we can do something like this as well. But in the morning he would wake up before Fajr prayer, he would pray his tahajjud, he would pray his Fajr Salah, the morning prayer. And then after that, he would sit making dhikr in the remembrance of Allah. All the way till Ishraq, till, till sunrise. 
and then he would perform two rakats of salah and this was his habit and then he would he would take a little rest he's retired early retirement so he would take some rest he would say to his family now please wake me up at 10 o'clock so it was a norm it was a routine and, and then alhamdulillah his day was filled with good good things so he went normal day he woke up he did the same thing and then he, he went to sleep he said to his family wake me up at 10 o'clock when they went to wake him up that day he prayed he did all his prayers as well and then when they went to wake him up he had already returned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if we want a good death we need to fill our day our evenings our afternoons our nights with goodness imagine this we, we do some tilawa of the quran we've attended the masjid we we help someone we're doing we're doing good things then most possibly or inshallah if we have a habit of reading the quran at this time then there's a possibility that my death might come at that time or, or even after that time so that you will you will leave this world in the manner that you lived on this earth and then what in the home that you will be raised from your graves in the manner. Imagine Allah Akbar Kabira, Allah forgive us, but we were doing something wrong. We were doing something that that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in that manner we left this world, what would be our situation? So Allah bless us all Allah grant me the understanding and the ability to act upon what's been said. And all of you, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. I'm sure we'll not be able to do that.